Preach. Preach the word. I'll say it. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, I thank God to be saved. I thank God to be sanctified. I thank God that I'm standing on my own two feet and in my right mind. And if I'm not, don't tell me I'm not. Just let me think I'm standing in my, in my right mind. <laughs> God's good, nevertheless. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to see all the saints. I'm glad to see all the visitors. I'm glad to see everybody that's made it out uh, today. I'm glad to see everybody that's on the stream. I won't see that till later. <laughs> everybody that comments anyways. Praise the Lord, everybody online. Uh, let's pray for our pastor in his absence as he travels back. I'm, I'll be glad to have the, the pastor over this house back. Amen. I'll be looking forward to Bible class. Amen. I'm, I thank God for a man that God called, prepared, and sent. Amen. He went through many, many years of preparation and all those hard stories and hard times that he had to endure. You know, we get to learn from them. Amen. And it's, it's funny how, you know, years later or some time later, you can look back at some of the bad things that happened and kind of laugh. But I'm sure back then he wasn't really laughing at a lot of those things. <laughs> you know, you can look back and laugh and, and say, man, that was a rough time and, and have a good attitude about it. But when you're going through, it's not really a laughing matter, is it? Amen. But that's not the, the message today. If you'll turn with me in your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter number 7. And then we'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But starting in Deuteronomy chapter number 7 in verse number 6. God is good, amen? Amen, Amen. and worthy to be praised. Deuteronomy chapter number 7 and verse number 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord, because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, in verse 26, 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 26 reads as such. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world... And things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. And the church said, Amen. 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 I love doing that. (laughs) Everybody says amen, and the saints are so beautiful and sound so beautiful. Uh, Speak in one accord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the title of our uh, message today is, It's Okay to Be Small. It's okay to be small. Now, somebody looking at me might say, Brother, you haven't been small in years. <laughs> but, and I, for some reason, I knew it was Brother Wallace. <laughs> but that's not the kind of small I'm talking about necessarily. So, it's okay to be small. You know, a lot of times, we as a society, we as humanity, we base, thank you, sir, we base our self worth on how much of a span of influence we have, how popular we are, how much money we have, how strong we are, you know, how big our biceps are, how much I can bench press. Unfortunately, some men especially go as far as to base their self-worth on how many women they can get, how many beers they can drink before they pass out uh, and have their friends ride on their face with Sharpie. People pride themselves in feeling like they're a hot shot. And I think there are, there's a certain type of person, if not all people, are inclined to want to feel important. People want to feel important. People want to feel needed. And we start to base our 
uh, confidence and our self-worth on whether or not we have or don't have these strengths. Strength, intellect, a college education. Some people don't think they're anything because they have a college education. Some people think they're everything because they have a college education. We, we take these things that we've been granted by God, the ability to learn, the ability to work and use our physical uh, faculties, the ability to do those things. God gave us those things. And, but we take those and start to think that because I have or don't have those things, that makes me better than somebody else. Right. See, the Bible says that knowledge puffeth up. So and all you have to do is you work in a skilled trade for a little while, and you'll start to see that the people that have been around that know something start to look down on the people that, have it, that, that don't know something. You know, people will, because you don't have an ed- education, you're not a, 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 of as much worth t- to me. And unfortunately, people will take this even further. If you don't have anything to offer me, I don't want anything to do with you. As the people of God, that's a shame on us if we take that attitude. See, the the people of God are set on a hill. The people of God, once you get saved, you've received a promotion. He hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is a heavenly place. Why? Because it's out of Zion that God hath shined. This is the seat, the throne of God. That he's preparing for judgment. So my brother or my sister that might not have as much of an education, that might not uh, be well as well off financially, they're not any less than me because, because physically they might not be as well off as me. But unfortunately, that's the way that people do. But those are the things that matter least in life are those things that have no eternal consequence. Solomon asked the question in Ecclesiastes, how dieth uh, the wise man even as the fool? Whether you're smart or dumb, you're rich or poor, you've got to go to that grave. And then what? There was the man that Jesus spoke about who, uh, you know, he had all these riches, and he said, well, you know what, now I'm going to make bigger barns so that then I can put all my stuff in these barns, and then I can say to my soul, soul, take thine ease. And then God said, thou fool, this night will thy soul be required of thee. So if God was to say to you right now, this night will thy soul be required of thee, how many of us would be sitting thinking about how big our bank account was? How many of us would be sitting around thinking about, um, have I met my, my, uh, my goal for my uh, bench press or for my deadlift? You know, there's a scripture that says that God's not impressed with the legs of man. Bodily exercise profiteth little. But, you know, because I'm alpha man, macho man, I'm better than you because you're not as big as me. It's okay to be small. It's okay to be small. So we look at, we look at King Saul in the Bible uh, when, when God first started to move on Saul's life to make him king, Saul had this attitude. Saul answered and said, am I not a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? But it's okay, Saul. It's okay to be small. And so God can use somebody like that, somebody that doesn't have the big head. But what happened was later on, Saul got the big head and he became presumptuous. See, this is what happens when somebody doesn't look at themselves like they're small. When they start to get an elated view of themselves, they get like the shoot from the hip type attitude. You know those people that think they know everything on their job, so they just do it how they think it needs to be done. And it causes more accidents. It causes more damage to property. It causes more problems. Why? Because instead of following the guidelines or asking somebody for advice, they just decide that they know how to do it, so they're just going to do it. And that's how we can get in God. See, the Bible says that, He, that Jesus is our sufficiency, who hath made us able ministers of the new covenant. I can't preach because I'm such a skilled speaker, because I'm such a good studier, because I know so much about the scriptures. None of that matters. It's God that's my sufficiency. And so for the rest of my life, whatever I do, I've got to be looking to God to fill up those places that I fall short in my life and assume that I know nothing and look to God for guidance. Because if I go off of Brother Christian's uh, leadership ability, if I go off of Brother Christian's charisma and Brother Christian's skill, Brother Christian's going to sink this ship like that Titanic. Okay, this, thing, this ship's going down if Brother Christian's at that helm. And, and I know Pastor Johnson won't take this anyway if I say this. If David Johnson was steering the ship, the ship would go down. But it's the Holy Ghost in David Johnson that's going to get us to glory. 
it's our confidence in God that's going to get us somewhere that, that actually matters. See, Saul, Saul went on and got the big head, and Samuel had to say to him, When thou wast little in thine own sight, Wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? See, if I'm not poor in spirit, and I get a big head, if I'm not poor in spirit, uh, uh, then, then, you know, I'm not going to be able to be meek, which means teachable. See, if I think I know everything, God can't direct me. God couldn't direct Saul. Saul started doing his own thing, and God cut him down for it. See, it's okay to be small, because being big, you get yourself in some big trouble. It's okay to be small. Paul said this, my, uh, that the Lord spoke to him and said, He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, the things that are wrong with me. That's what I'm going to brag about. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. It's my weaknesses that God is going to take those and do something with it. God uses little people. It's okay to be small. God uses little people. Think about David, a man after God's own heart, a legendary praiser. See, we think we're, we're cutting up and putting on a show when we get up here and we dance and get all anointed. David is a legendary praiser. Right. David was a man after God's own heart. David was a great king in Israel. But let me tell you something about David. David started out but nothing less than a little shepherd boy. Right. Matter of fact, when Samuel went uh, to Jesse's house to anoint king, Jesse w- uh, David was an afterthought to Jesse. And Samuel had to say, well, don't you have any other sons? I know God sent me here to anoint somebody. Right. And, and Jesse said, well, you know, there's David. Well, you know, there's Brother Christian. Well, you know, there, there's Brother Jeff. Well, you know, there's Brother so-and-so. There's Brother you. There's, there's Sister you. Some of us in here are afterthoughts, like David was an afterthought. Right. But it's okay to be small. Yeah. You know, you think, about, you think about Gideon's 300 men. God whittled down an army to a small group of 300 men and, and used those 300 men in a way to where the city that they were overtaking. Those men were so scared, they started killing their own selves. God uses the little person. God uses small. God chooses the small for great things. When it came time for God to be robed in flesh, for God to send uh, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to come and die in our stead, he said, but thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come uh, forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. God, who is from everlasting to everlasting, was born in little old Bethlehem was born uh, the son of a carpenter. He wasn't one of those nobles. He wasn't somebody of high cloud or status. He was a carpenter. He was, that gr- he, he, was, he was in the family, that gruff person where you shake their hands um, uh, uh, over at family fair, and you're like, man, are those hands sandpaper? You know, <laughs> Jesus was a part of that sort of group. You know, he hung out with the fishermen. He chose 12 disciples uh, from Gal- these Galileans, these people that were nobodies. You know, Matthew was a tax collector, but the, some of the people that he chose, uh, they were nobodies. Even the tax collectors, these were people that were looked down on and thought of as nobodies. And Jesus took them and decided to use them to establish the foundation of the New Testament church. It's okay to be small. So I don't need to look at myself, oh, God can't use me or God doesn't want me because I'm a nobody. God chooses nobodies and makes them kings and priests unto our God. God takes those nobodies and does something with them. Let's, we'll go back to our focus verse um, in Deuteronomy. See where he starts out, his, where, he, where we read, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. And when you're studying the Bible, something important to do is to pay attention to the little words. Okay? Because every little thing is important. Jesus said this, That not one jot or one tittle of the law shall pass away until all be fulfilled. A tittle is a little cross, a punctuation mark like a cross of a T. And a jot is a little dot like that goes above an I. We need to pay attention to every thing in the Bible. So when he says for thou, see he's connecting forward to what he had said previously. And in the first verse of Deuteronomy 7, he's talking about when Israel was supposed to come into the land that God was going to bring them into. And he says this, when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it and hath cast out many nations before thee, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. God had taken, we think about Israel, our, our example today is Israel. 
they were, they were this little family of, uh, of shepherds, of little nobodies. God took the single man Abraham and ended up making a whole nation of them. And, and, and let me tell you something. They were slaves. They were nobodies. They, but Egypt was secretly afraid of them. But, but they were under the world power at the time. Egypt was, was a great, mighty world power at the time. And God did something miraculous for them. God took these nobodies and made them into a special people unto himself above all the people that were on the face of the earth. Now, how did he do it? Let's think back. All the firstborn were going to die. God performed 10 plagues. On that last plague, the firstborn had to die. But he let a lamb take the place of the death of the firstborn. And I'll tell you what, he did that for us today, and that lamb's name is Jesus Christ. He let that little lamb take the place of the death of the firstborn. Now, a lot of people take that and think just because Jesus died, for them, that makes them saved. Oh, not so. Because that lamb was slain, but they were still under the control of the Egyptians. It wasn't until they were all baptized in the Red Sea until they were all led by the cloud that they were delivered and they sang their song of redemption and Moses said the Lord is my salvation he's my strength and my song and that's when God told them stand still and see the salvation of the Lord it wasn't the blood of the lamb that was their salvation it was the blood of the lamb coupled with passing through the water coupled with being led by the spirit if you want if you're a little person today and you want to be delivered you've got to have the blood on your life. You've got to pass through the waters of baptism in Jesus name. You've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So they passed through and and God redeemed them from Egypt. But that wasn't all because he was going to take this this group of people who, who they weren't skilled fighters. They weren't anything like that and cast out seven nations greater and mightier than them. See, God doesn't want to just save you and then do nothing with you. Oh, no. God's going to take you, little person today, and save you. He's going to fill you. He's going to cleanse you. And then he's going to let you watch him work in your life. See, God opens doors that no man can close. You think you're little and you can't do anything. God wants to show you exactly what he can do in your life. God wants to show you what he can make you. You might think, well, I'm not, I'm not smart. I'm not, I can't talk well. I can't speak well. But the Bible said that God chose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. We are those foolish things. I wasn't anybody before I got saved. But by the grace of God, I am what I am today. Amen. God takes those foolish things and gives them a mouth of wisdom that none of their enemies can gainsay or resist. He saves them uh, in the scripture we mentioned earlier. He has raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places. The Bible says, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty. God has shine. God can't. God, what would God want me for? Because I'm not pretty. Well, if you're saved, you're in the perfection of beauty. Amen. Amen? Amen. Now, some of us might think we're a little bit more beautiful than others. Hallelujah. God will take little, what we think, nobodies and save them and make them somebodies in Christ Jesus. It's okay to be small. It's okay to be uneducated. It's okay uh, to be a little bit more like a roly-poly like Brother Christian. It's okay to be those things. Guess what? God doesn't look on the outward. God looks on the inward. He wants somebody that's willing to say, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. You know, it's okay. The people, the people look at you at your job like you're nobody. The people look at your job like you don't know anything and they assume you're stupid because you don't uh, 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 go right off like they go right off but guess what the Bible if you're one of God's you are the apple of God's eye and he has separated you to be a special people above all the people that are on, on the earth why not because we are so great not because I'm big it's okay to be small the reason why God has such great love on us is because of how great God is beloved what manner of love hath the father bestowed on us that we should be called the sons of God. It's not because we are special. It's not because I'm special. See, we look at kids and we say they're special and we love them, our kids, don't we? But kids are pretty bad people. <laughs> kids are pretty bad people, okay? Now, now don't take this, don't make it, me say anything I'm not saying. The Bible says this, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. They're just born naturally foolish, so the Bible says the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Kids are self-serving. They cry immediately when they want something. They'll lie and trick you into thinking something's wrong so that they can get what they want from you. If there was a full-grown person like that, we would say that's a pretty bad person. So why do we love kids so much? It's not because necessarily they're so great, but it's because of how genuine and real our love is as parents. 
and we look at them, we see what they can be and what they are to us because of who they are. So God will save you not because of who you are. It's not because of your last name. It's not because of how much money you have. It's not because of how great of a person you are, but it's because of who he is. So we need to drop this whole thinking we're so special because of our education, because of our background, because of our family name. The only name that we should care about is Jesus. Amen. So many people get caught up into the last names or being related to this preacher or that preacher. None of that matters. The Bible says that he hath uh, chosen all of these base things that no flesh should glory in his in his presence. But unfortunately, a lot of times we make church, and I'm not saying us now, but people in general make church a flesh show. How, how well you dress or how well you speak or how many people you can get to shout, how, how big of a last name you got, how many people you bring to this event or that event. None of that matters. God chooses the little things to confound the wise. It's okay to be small. You know, I'll go to some of these, uh, I'll go to different events and stuff and see people feeling all high and mighty about themselves because they're title, and I just sit back and roll my eyes. You know, you, you think about, you think about this, I'll tell you a story and then I'm, as I'm getting ready to close. There was, there was a man who had a guest preacher come to town. He was a pastor of a church and had a guest uh, minister come to town. And he was riding around in the automobile with uh, the guest minister and, and was bragging, look at the buildings that we've made. Look at this we've done, you know, that kind of thing, bragging on himself. And the wife of the guest minister said, brother, gangsters have better buildings than that. What a, what a, when, God, when God tells me, well done, He's not going to say, well done, Elder Jackson. He's not going to say, well done, Bishop Jackson. He's not going to say, well done, Chief Apostle Jackson. I want my God to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. God takes little things and does great things with them. And I'm going to be a king and priest over the worlds to come. But it's all right to be little right now. You can look at me like I'm nobody. That's all right. I'm special to Jesus because I got the Holy Ghost because I'm living for him. He's mine and I'm his and nobody can take that away from me. What shall separate me? What shall separate us from the love of God? You want to look at me like I'm nothing? Glory, glory. Hallelujah. What do I care? Friends don't treat me like they used to. There's a song that there's a song that says as long as I got a seat in the kingdom. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Because God uses little things. It's okay to be small. Amen. Amen. Elder Pompey.